We are now going to discuss how we can do network mapping or manipulating the um, subnets to be able to create these smaller networks based on the information that we have uh, within the network itself. So if we go through and we look at our base IP address here, this is the network address for the university. The bits have been displayed up above as well as the subnet mask and the resulting network address. So we take our network address and we get uh, 137.190.0.0 um, and the slash 16 or we're using 16 bits here to create our base subnet mask for the university and the result is our network address of 137.190.0.0 is the address we're going to work with. So what we are going to do in this particular case is we're going to borrow from the right hand side those bits that we have within our network uh, that could be possible host address but we're going to borrow a couple of more bits to create uh, a couple of subnets. Now what we do is we start off with our base network address and we're going to borrow just two more bits. So we're going to go to a slash 18 instead of a slash 16. Now because we have borrowed two more bits we have a possibility of four subnets to be created. How do we get the four subnet number? Well if you take the two bits to the second power, so two to the second power is going to give us the number of subnets we have and and 2 squared is 4 for the number of subnets. So we can go through then and based on this concept that we have our subnet mask with the four subnets that we want to manipulate, all we have to do is manipulate the address found in the top row here with the possible addresses that we could have. Now based on that concept we have uh, possibilities of those two bits the 17th and 18th bits being 00, 01, 10, and 11. Now I should point out that I'm talking about the bits in the top row in the network address, not the bits in the subnet mask because we're not going to manipulate them. We're going to leave them at the slash 18. So again, our possibilities 00, 01, 10, 11. So our slide shows us the possible addresses that could come through in our binary pattern. You notice the top uh, grouping is the resulting address is 00. zero. In the second grouping the resulting address is a zero 01. In the third grouping the address is 10 and the fourth grouping the address is 11. Now we're going to look at each one of these individually and see what the addresses of the network will be. So as I go through and I look at that address, it is uh, 137.190.0.0, but it's slash 26, not slash 24, which is our base network. So with the slash 26, that's a different address. The second subnet, 137.190, and then it's going to be 64. Now if you wonder, well, where did you get 64 from? You look at the address that results from our subnet, and you notice that the 128, the value of the 128 bit is 0, but the value of the 64 um, bit is 1, so that's the 64. The third address we have is a 10, which is 137.190.128.0 slash 26. And our fourth subnet is 137.190.192.0 slash 26. Where did 192 come from? Well, I add 128 and 64 and it equals 192. So those are the four possible values that we get for our subnet network addresses with a slash 26 address. Alright, so let's go through and let's start looking back again at the first subnet we created and what are the possible addresses? So remember we said this was a 
0.0.0 network address with a slash 26 subnet mask. Now the possible ranges of our host address are calculated by simply manipulating those bits that are found in green on the top row. And we can go through and we can manipulate each of those and come up with possible addresses. Now, the zero is already taken, but we could make it, uh, the far right hand bit there, a one. And therefore, the range of addresses goes from, um, on those greens, all zeros except for the last bit being a one, to, to the other end would be all ones of those green numbers. Now, again, all ones means we have to have a broadcast address, where we, so we solve that out or take that out. So the range of addresses then is going to be 137.190.0.1 through 137.190.63.254. The broadcast address for this subnet is 137.190.63.255. Look at the second subnet, and again, we filter through to where the base network address is 137.190.64.0 slash 26. Now, if you're astute, you'll notice that the 137.190.64.0 is one more than the previous subnet's broadcast address. So the previous subnet had 137.190.63.255. Well, the next number is 137.190.64.0. And that is what this subnet network address is. And again, manipulating the green number shown in the slide here, we have the possible host addresses as 137.190.64.1 to 137.190.127.254. With the broadcast address being 137.190.127.255. The third subnet. Again, the base subnet address is 137.190.128.0 slash 26. And by manipulating those bits, we get the host addresses of 137.190.128.1 to 137.190.191.255. And the broadcast address is 137.190.191.255. The fourth and final subnet here from our network is 137.190.192.0 slash 26. The host address is 137.190.192.1 to 137.190.255.254 with the broadcast address being 137.190.255.255. The key here is remembering that all we're doing is going through and manipulating these bits and you can calculate what those ranges are if you manipulate the bits in binary as well. And so those ranges of addresses, the subnet mask, the network address, and the broadcast address can all rather easily be calculated if we do these simple things. And it doesn't matter if we have a extra two bits or an extra three bits or an extra four bits, however many bits we're borrowing for our subnet, we just have to mark where our network address is, identify what bits in our subnet, what are the extra bits in our subnet that we're playing with, and then what are the remaining bits and how do we manipulate those to get us the addresses that we want. So, key points here. Find the boundary of the network address for the organization you're working with. You have to know what that network address is and what the subnet mask is. Then, once you know that information, then you're going to borrow bits to the right of that subnet mask, and that will result in creating the given number of subnets that you need. If you need two subnets, you're going to borrow one bit. If you need four subnets, you're going to borrow two bits. If you need eight subnets, you're going to borrow three bits. If you're going to need 16 subnets, you're going to borrow four bits. All we're doing is calculating out what those values are and then based on that, determine the possibilities of what they are. So we go through and we take the number of bits borrowed and then work our progression through. 
So like we did here with this uh, progression to where we had the two bits, the possibilities were 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. If we had three bits, it would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, etc. until you had manipulated all of those bits of the ones that you've borrowed. Once you've manipulated those bits to calculate out what our network address is for the given subnet, then you can go back and you can calculate what the addresses of the hosts in the subnet will be by manipulating the remaining bits to the right of your bits that you've borrowed to calculate out what the possible addresses be, will be. So <clears throat> the key thing to remember here is how do we go through and we borrow those bits? How many bits do we borrow is based on the number of subnets we need. Once we've gotten that number of bits that we're going to borrow, we play with them to calculate all possible values. And then once you've calculated those possible values, you run it through the filters and calculate out what the possible subnets can be. In other words, what the possible values can be. And then convert that to decimal and that will give you your network address. And then once you have that network address, then you can calculate what are the addresses of the hosts and then what is the broadcast address.